here from Sustainable Reefs. And uh, today we're gonna frag a second generation Lebophilia. So what that means by generation is how long it's been in our system here on the coral farm. And um, basically we like to show that corals can be kept multiple times after fragging. Um, and the, the process is forever repeatable and you can, it just keeps going. So a second generation frag or colony as we'll frag today is a colony grown from a frag that came from a wild coral. So we'll get a wild coral uh, or we'll source a coral from it somewhere and it will then be fragged and then put into cement or perspex or tile bases here. That will grow out and when it's large enough, it will be fragged again. And the frags that come off that are second generation. Um, some of those get held back as second generation frags to be fragged again as third generation. We generally just keep track of the second generations, but some of them we really note that they improve after the more you cut them, the longer they stay here, the better they get. They just, the colors get more vibrant, they gain colors. So we try and keep them here, we'll keep some of them here as long as possible. So today we've got that Lobophilia. Uh, it's been here, I'd say around a year, and it was a, a little colony, a little uh, odd shaped colony, and um, it's quite a nice color. I have noticed, uh, I'll, I'll try and dig up some photos of when it was first put down into the bases, but I have noticed that it's got quite a lot of extra color since being here for that, uh, at least a year. So when we cut it today, uh, I'll run you through some tips on what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. But um, most importantly, the aftercare, because cutting a coral is easy. It's, it's uh, well, for the most part, it's easy. Uh, there's not too many tricks on where to cut a coral and how to cut a coral. It's just cut the coral. They, they break, they fracture. Um, and there's literally only a handful of tips and tricks that I could show you that will improve the actual cutting process. The rest of it is always up to water chemistry at the end of the day. So um, I hope you enjoy it and um, I'll try and learn, I'll show you some things on the way. So these are the generation two Lobophilia we're gonna frag today. Um, they've got some really cool colors that have developed. Um, from what I remember, they were more red. They had a little bit of yellowy orange in them, but uh, they were put down as roughly half or a third of that. And they've grown, grown considerably. They've grown onto these cement bases we use. They're fully encrusted to that. So, um, We've got a little bit of a changed method uh, in the way that we cut uh, LPS corals, or the way that we grow them out, I should say. We used to use these cement bases. They're still fine to use. They don't do anything to the aquarium, but some corals, I like to use these hexagonal ones here that I've got some scollies growing out on. Um, oh, I lied, that's a cement base again. Um, this is the hex base. Uh, so they, these are some Scolomia frags or Homophilia australis frags that are growing out re really well on those. Um, I use those now. Um, there's a couple of reasons. I won't quite get into that today, but um, the concrete's safe to use. Absolutely nothing wrong with it, but they're just a bit big. So that's what we're going to cut today, and let's take it over to the saw and do it. All right, we're over here at the saw. Uh, I'm going to chuck my other glove on. Um, I may may throw this glove off from time to time or just not use it. I advise you to use gloves if you can, because if, if you're anything like me, you get really irritated by coral. It does build up in your system over time and after years of doing this, I get incredibly itchy after touching certain species of coral. Lobo aren't so bad for me, but I still like to. I'll deglove a couple of times because I've got a second camera here and I'm gonna do some alternate angles if I can. Um, first things first, the bandsaw, uh, just a Gryphon, they're good for hobbyist level. I would like to get something uh, a lot more industrial. They have salt water in the bottom and we also use 
Coral Essentials Reef KI3 as a bacteria killer and it's a rate of around about two mils per litre. I've done that a million times, so I don't really need to measure it. Um, you can put extra if you need. Um, it's basically just to kill some potential bacteria and um, that is ready to go. Uh, the blade is a little bit blunt on this, so you'll probably watch me struggle with it. It's gonna go sideways, I just know it. Um, <laughs> But, um, so the first time I'm going to cut it, I'm just going to drop it straight through the middle there and expose the, the core of the skeleton, which you might have seen in previous video videos. You'll see it sunk right down into the, um, uh, into the cement. So you'll be able to see that, and then I'll show you what I do with that afterwards. I'm also going to use this as a bonus round in case you'd like to try it at home and don't happen to have a Gryphon saw laying around. All right. So, I like to go through the mouth, but you don't have to go through the mouth. It's not entirely necessary. Coral will regrow a mouth without having a section of mouth. I put a bit too much water in this so you can see it as well, it's going everywhere. And my sponge has disappeared. Alright. Um, so, you try and get that to refocus on there. We've got some. That, you can see how it's sunk in below here. You can see the new tissue over there. So it's around about two thirds bigger. There's about a third of the coral this side and a third of the coral that side. And the same deal here. There's, get some different light going on there. Yeah, there's about a third of the coral either side of that original little piece that was sunk inside. So the next step, is to remove the cement off of this and in the process I'm going to cut that into four. So from one piece we've gained three and I hold one back just like we were talking about before as a generation uh, like as the original piece. So I'll, I'll take three frags from that. Those three frags will be grown out and sent to a local fish store somewhere. The one that I keep will be obviously kept here to do exactly this again to in about a year's time. Not the most viable thing, but it's the right thing to do. Yeah, that blade is really bad, but that and then all of this old tissue down in here or that old skeleton it's completely pointless it doesn't have any flesh in it and serves no purpose at all to the coral so I cut them off really thin old and gone and a little bit of a trim up around here so from that you can imagine what I'm going to do to those pieces but I won't bore you with that right now I'll get straight to fixing that down to the new to the new base and um, and show you where that goes and what we do to them after because aftercare as I was saying before is the most important this is nothing you can pretty much do that with anything so the next one that I'll do as a little bit of a bonus, the hacksaw, it's going to be, I'll just hope that I can get this camera angle right here, it's going to be the same, it's just more manual <laughs> um, and more difficult, but as you can see a hacksaw does cut it.
and yeah, there's the, the other half, so that one will go down. So yeah, more manual. A hacksaw with just a fine tooth metal blade is all I use. Uh, will do just fine if you don't have a bandsaw. Obviously, that's a thin or small skeleton. If you're doing a large, wild colony of Lebophilia, you're in for a nice workout if you're using a handsaw like that. So, all right, let's get to the gluing and the aftercare. All right, to the gluing. So, um, again, it's just a simple process. Uh, always soak your tiles in water. These have been soaking overnight. You, you only need to soak them for 10 minutes. Um, these ones here are for the mother colony again. So that's the, the hex tile I was talking about before. Uh, the reason that some of our mother colonies are being moved to those is because they cut up really easily on the bandsaw. The cement blocks are just a little bit too hard on those bandsaw blades. Um, and they're quite expensive when you go through many, many of them. Uh, also, these tessellate really well in our system and I can fit about four to five hundred of those on a single tray in our in our grow out system. So we're gonna uh, I move to a lot of those and it's it's just a little bit better. Some corals I still use those cement bases for. Bit of a horses for courses situation. Right, soaked, dried, and well I just pat them dry. And um, then Grab my glue, I use mainly ME glue here, and get that ready to go. And again, with the little frags, I ended up making six of these. Um, in the, hopefully you can see that. Yeah, six frags, we got out of that one piece, which um, is good for the other part of what I wanna show you about uh, keeping generations. Basically, the, the, oh, the other reason too, the cement that we used here, it, it, it doesn't, the glue doesn't stick to it. No matter what cyanoacrylate you use, it just doesn't stick to it. So you gotta, we always have to make sure the, um, the glue is on the coral skeleton instead. So that's gonna go onto there and that will be a frag that grows out, uh, that, uh, that gets sold because it's on a uh, smaller base. And the ones that grow out, so that cement is falling off there, and the ones that grow out will go on here. I mean, gluing, it's a simple process. Um, kindergarten kids do it, it's done. I can't really get too technical with that without being boring. So they're glued on, they're done, they go back into the aquarium. So let's talk about water quality and what we do to make that grow out. Alright, so we ended up with seven. I couldn't count the first time around. So seven frags. I put four of those onto uh, small frag plugs, which will eventually go for sale. So those are what we're talking about before as generation three now. And uh, these are the holdbacks as generation two. So I'll keep those, they'll get grown out, and eventually we can repeat this in six months or a year's time and end up with this same result from each one of those. So the process is exponential. We're always gonna get more and more and more every time we frag, and which means more and more and more of those, so everyone can have one. So uh, what I'd like to show you is these guys here. This is the end result. Um, it's That's grown out. It's probably been on about three or four months. It's fully encrusted, fully healed to the, to the base. Um, here's another one here, fully encrusted, fully healed and ready to go. Um, so that's the goal. There's a bit of time frame there as six months. And um, yeah, so I'll talk about water quality now and how we get from that to that. All right. I hope you enjoyed the uh, fragging down there before. It's, it's, it's a relatively simple process for, for most anyway, and, and you can use a, a range of tools, whatever you feel comfortable with fragging. Uh, the, the, the actual cut isn't really that important. As long as you're using clean tools, sterile tools, sharp tools, and 
not ripping any flesh or doing excessive damage to the coral where it's not really necessary. So coming to the most important part, after it's glued down, it's settling in that tank down there, we've just destroyed that coral's main ability to feed. So LPS corals, or they've, they've got, they possess Zanthellae, they can feed from light, but they don't use it a lot. It's, it's all food. They've got a big fleshy mouth. They've got uh, a sort of, sort of stomach and they digest a lot of food. In the wild, they're always feeding. They have big tentacles out there. They're fleshy. They consume a lot of food. So while we've just destroyed their mouths and I've cut one lobo into seven pieces and I have cut them almost like a little pizza so there is, right on the point of the, of the frag, there is a little bit of mouth tissue. And from that mouth tissue, those mouth cells will divide and they'll grow a new mouth relatively quickly. But what they need to do that, and they're not gonna be eating to gain that nutrition, they're gonna be feeding directly from the water column and using light. So light, everyone's got that covered, it's pretty simple, but something a lot of people overlook is amino acids and vitamins and they work hand in hand and as some of you are aware sustainable reefs and coral essentials are one and the same uh, we make an R&D the um, coral essentials here on the farm and have it tested in a real world sort of situation so the corals are using the amino acids that uh, we use the coral essentials amino and coral essentials grow which is a vitamin a vitamins and the corals uptake the amino acids during a photo period and use them to grow at night, mostly. And, and we can see that from ALK drawer and calcium drawer um, throughout different periods of the day. And they use the vitamins to use the aminos. So that is the most important thing, is water quality. So you've got your feeding, and then what do you do with your excess nutrients from feeding? You need to remove them. So we prefer a bacteria driven system. So a lot of bacterial media, uh, whether that be like a ceramic media or like marine pure or um, all the ceramic balls. We, all, we actually use a volcanic stone um, called Quinken rock or scoria and, uh, and a large skimmer. So that's our preferred method of nutrient control. So we feed a lot of solid foods as well for the corals that are growing. We feed a lot of amino acids and vitamins, but we also strip it back. Our phosphate and nitrate readings are always zeroed. We dose a lot of liquid form uh, nitrates and phosphates as well as feeding, because the amount of feeding that we have to do is just phenomenal here. So we, while we're not here at night, we're dosing liquid forms all day or all night. So. That I can't stress enough, the cutting is fine. So if you're gonna be fragging corals at home, I think look close to home first and be have your water quality dialed in and have a feeding regime. Find a, a coral food, uh, amino acid supplement. There's hundreds out there. Like you, you don't have to use any particular one. You can use a variance of them. So like some different brands use different uh, different combinations of amino acids. There's about 27 or something like that off the top of my head. And you can use different ones. Some corals use them more than others, as in use one type more than others. Um, so you, you wanna make sure the nutrition's there on a few different levels. So water, uh, water column uptake and direct absorption through the flesh, which is amino acids. And then when they have that mouth healed, you want to have solid foods in there for them to continue growing. And then all that excess feeding, or correct amount of feeding, I should say, because in the wild they feed a lot. So all of that feeding is gonna cause excess nutrients. They need to get that back out because they don't have excessive nutrients in the wild and those excessive nutrients hinder growth. So to strip them back out, you need to have a well-designed system to remove a nutrient export. It could be uh, macroalgae, it could be resins, it could be whatever you want to be, but as long as it works for you. Every aquarium is different. So um, yeah, I'd like to hear everyone's thoughts on 
on their success with fragging LPS corals in particular, because that's something close to my heart, is because not many people do it and, and stick around for the long haul. And I love seeing that growth. Um, and I, I'm glad that it could be brought here to Sustainable Reefs. And I'm glad that um, Rick and Christian, the owners of the company, were able to or let me sort of run with it and and, uh, and really push along with growing LPS because it's something that I like to sink my teeth into and, and share about doing. So, all right, so I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, please let us know uh, your successes, your failures even, we might be able to help out on, on some of those with growing LPS, in particular fragging LPS. And, and also let us know if you've got any um, ideas for future videos or what you'd like to see from us at Sustainable Reefs. All right, happy reefing.